Hello and welcome to week seven of our course, EDUC 373. I can't believe we've made it this far. We're almost done. Um, I hope that you and your family had a fabulous Thanksgiving. My husband and my three-year-old daughter, Avery, were lucky enough and blessed enough to celebrate Thanksgiving three separate times with extended family members. Um, again, I am very lucky to have a large extended family. My mom is one of 16 kids, um, and there were 84 and a half, we count <laughs> halves for expected mothers, um, 84 and a half people in attendance at our Thanksgiving celebration on Saturday. So that was really special to be able to attend. Um, and then we also celebrated on Thursday with my husband's family. And then the three of us did our own little Thanksgiving celebration on Friday. So I hope you had a good time, like I said, and are staying warm. It sure got chilly um, overnight. I was kind of hoping for a snow day, I'm not going to lie. Um, it was pretty slick this morning, so I'm hoping you all made it safely to work or school or wherever the location is that you were traveling to today. Um, I wanted to go over a few things before we get started, and um, in particular, some of our assignments that are coming up. I'm going to pop over to our assignments section. As you know and are hopefully aware, your Utilizing Effective Communications Reflection is due December 3rd. Um, when I posted the assignment last week, I did extend that deadline till Wednesday of this week. Um, if you are a little confused on what to do, perhaps you haven't had the portfolio classes yet, or the folio classes as we now call them at MOBAP, be sure to look in your syllabus. In your syllabus, you are reflecting on that standard on communication. You will um, pick two, at least two artifacts, hopefully from this class, that have helped to make you a more effective communicator. Artifacts could include your Twitter assignment, um, maybe even your participation in the discussion board or other types of tools you've used to help yourself become a better communicator. Um, and then you will reflect on that with several paragraphs. Um, you do have to reference at least two theorists as well. Um, there is, like I said, a rubric and more information on that assignment in your um, syllabus. So in addition to that, you have your DEGO project due. For that, you need to be sure that you submit your DEGO URL through the link um, on Blackboard when you're ready to submit. It also must be in the Sharing of Projects and Resources Discussion Board. Um, I will only grade it from the Blackboard link, however, so if it is not posted in both places, you are not going to get full credit. In addition, be sure that your links are public. A lot of times, um, Students will turn it in and I won't see any links and it's because there's one little setting that they missed and that is changing their links from private to public. Um, lastly, your Twitter um, assignment is due and that is due on December 7th, my birthday. So um, I will be looking for those assignments as well. You're going to be writing a two to three page reflection on Twitter has helped you grow your personal learning network. You do need to make sure that's an APA format. I will be looking for things like your biography and I will be looking um, to see what kind of interactions you've made with your fellow classmates using our course hashtag MBU373. Um, you have been warned not to wait until the last minute to do this. You have a week left to participate in that Twitter assignment. Um, I look forward to seeing further interactions with you all. Um, be sure you include your link to your Twitter account. For example, mine is twitter.com slash Andrea Blanco. Um, that will just make it easier for me to grade. Okay, um, as always, if you look in our weekly assignments, and scroll down to week seven, you will see um, a brief preview of what assignments you have for this week. 
and more information on what we'll be doing this week. I will also be sending an announcement out at the conclusion of this recording. So let's go ahead and talk about the standard that we are kind of covering today. Number five in our SD standards for teachers is engage in professional growth and leadership. Teachers continuously improve their professional practice, model lifelong learning, and exhibit leadership in their school and professional community by promoting and demonstrating the effective use of digital tools and resources. So that's definitely a mouthful, especially when you're just reading it off a screen. What does that mean to you? To me, it means kind of um, that teachers never stop learning. We are trying to improve our professional practice for the sake of our students every day, all day long, um, whether it be a trying to build yourself as a learner through virtual or face-to-face -face means. Um, and then continuing that teaching and learning when you are in a classroom setting and with your colleagues in your buildings. So let's look at the sub bullet A real quick. Participate in local and global learning communities to explore creative applications of technology to improve student learning. That's exactly what our Twitter um, accounts were built for. We are participating in that global learning community virtually for the sake of our students. Um, I do it to connect with educators, to participate in chats, and find connections for my students on a global level. Um, for example, one global learning connection that I was able to make because of my Twitter account was with a teacher in Africa. Our students were studying different types of habitats in third grade as part of our units of study. We were able to actually Skype with those kiddos um, in Africa and figure out what the similarities and differences were in our habitats here in Missouri and um, in a continent all the way across the world. Exhibit leadership by demonstrating a vision of technology, developing the leadership and technology skills of others. That's bringing your learning back. For example, if I went to a conference, it's bringing my learning back to share with people in either my professional learning community, my PLC, or just with other teachers in my building. Um, Screencast-O-Matic, I use it all the time. It's not uncommon for me to shoot a video <clears throat> of something that I've learned about recently and share it with other um, just professionals in my school district. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, evaluate and reflect on current research and professional practice on a regular basis. Um, that is basically for the purpose of making sure the use of the technology that you're sharing with your students is effective. Um, in today's world, technology is evolving so, so quickly. Just because something is an emergence technology, um, like for example, 3D printers, doesn't mean that it's necessarily a good tool to use in the classroom. However, I do think that's a really pretty awesome tool to use. I go um, based on the research and reflection on other educators to make sure that's a good fit for my classroom before um, I implement it. Um, and then lastly, just contributing to the effectiveness, vitality, and self-renewal of the teaching profession and of their school and community. When I look at effectiveness, vitality, and self-renewal, that to me is um, keeping students and teachers engaged in that teaching and learning process. And to me, there's nothing better to help that engagement than technology. It definitely spices up the classroom. So... Um, Again, oh, sorry about that. It's my email coming through. We're going to just talk quickly about a few tools that I use, um, not necessarily on a day-to-day -day basis, but things that I pop in on um, quite regularly to build my professional practice. Um, and the first one, like we've talked about before, is Twitter. Um, this allows me to have any time, anywhere learning. Um, for example... I'm just looking at some of these tweets. These are people that I know I can count on in my professional um, learning network. If I needed to learn more about blended learning, I know I can go to Howard and look, he's got a framework for me right away. He has tagged it blended learning, so I know I can search that hashtag if I needed to. Um, 
again, the power of Twitter is in the following and the followers. Now, this will change um, on a day-to-day -day basis, just depending on the ebb and the flow of Twitter. Um, I'm going to pop over to people that I'm following real quickly and um, just kind of scroll through them a little bit to talk about some of the people in my network. Um, as you guys know, I'm an educational technology specialist. I use Twitter to connect with people that um, are of like mind with me and kind of have um, the same types of interests and passions that I do. So I just kind of scrolled down a little bit. Um, Lisa, she's a tech integration specialist. I know that she uses Discovery Education um, quite heavily. We have a subscription to that in my district. And she is loving the iPads in her classroom. Pat Wilson, she's actually an assistant superintendent in my school district. Um, same here, Brian House, another um, actual building administrator. And again, oh, there's a couple of you guys. There's Patrick and there's um, Elisheba. I hope I did not just butcher your name and Elise um, and some of the other people in our classroom um, course. And again, just scrolling down. These are people that I connect with um, and then I learn from. Here's definitely a big one. Mike McCann. He is out of Wentzville. If I need any help with Google, he's one of my go-to guys. I just simply tweet him again anytime, anywhere, um, and I know that he'll get back to me if I have a question or I just need some support. Um, Reed Spring Wolves. This is a high school that went into a one-to-one -one environment. Um, our district is looking into doing that. Um, I know, again, if I have questions on how their implementation went or if I needed them to share best practices with me, things like that, um, I can go to this site and just send them a tweet and find out what's going on. So again, um, that's my Twitter network. I do visit that one um, almost every day. I'm not necessarily tweeting every day, um, but I might try and catch part of a Twitter chat um, and do other things um, just to help me stay connected and up to date on the latest technology. It is a site where I do um, discover some of the the best and, and brightest that, that the education world has to offer um, us in the form of people. And I do find out those um, educational trends and and technologies that are the most popular um, at any point in time. Some of the other not necessarily social networks that I use, but here is another one, is Google+. Um, I will admit I am not as active in Google+, as I am in Twitter. However, this is kind of Google's Twitter. Um, to me, it reminds me kind of like Facebook, kind of like Twitter, kind of combination. So I'm just kind of scrolling through my Google+, stream. Um, and again, I follow kind of, kind of the same people there as I do... Um, on Twitter, Mark Wagner, he is, always has amazing things to share. Julie, she is part of um, Emens. She works for the Emens National Center. <clears throat> they specialize in inquiry-based learning powered by technology, um, and she's somebody I like to keep up with as well. So again, just scrolling down, ooh, that looks like a great picture that I'd want to use in a presentation. Um, we are actually doing a um, book study on mindset. So I'm kind of excited to see this one right here. <clears throat> and again, just kind of scrolling down my feed to see kind of what's going on. Um, again, kind of like Facebook in that there are some just kind of funny um, quirks and pictures of kids on here, but also um, things that are pertinent to education. Vokey, that's a tool that I use, um, our kids use for multimedia publishing. Um, Josh, he was the Illinois Teacher of the Year a few years ago. He's somebody I keep up with on Google+. Um, next is Pinterest. Now, this is one that people use for a lot of per personal reasons. Um, it's kind of gotten a uh, bad rap as being kind of a feminine thing to do, but I want to show you how I use it for education. So not only do I just find the cute stuff that might make my um, classroom pop, but I follow specific boards that are for education. So um, here's a board that just says Google, 
Again, I'm kind of in love with Google now. We just went to Google Apps for Educators for our school. So that's something that I'm really into and I've been following. If I click up here, sorry about that. I had to stop and restart. Somebody knocked on my door. I'm still in um, my office at school. So I've clicked under my profile and navigated to some of my boards. As you can see, um, I do follow some educational technology stuff as well as just some, some personal stuff. But you can see I have an EdTech board, an iPad board. As you go down, you can see I have divided things up into teaching um, different subjects. So if a teacher asks me if um, I have a specific resource for um, word work, I know that I can go to my teaching literacy board and just throw them some links. Same thing with teaching math. Oops, I clicked inside that. Um, I did have a Common Core board, then I figured out it was just <laughs> it was just too much without making it more specific. So that is one tip I would give you when creating your boards: make them specific. These instructional strategies are aligned to Marzano's instructional strategies. Um, he is a theorist who has some tried and true research-based strategies that will help students um, raise their test scores. Um, and that's something that our district has adopted. I have got my classroom behavior management. Oh, look, I even have my EDUC 373 board. And just scrolling down, you can kind of see some of the other ones that I have here. This is great for me to help extend other teachers' learning kind of like um, the standard, the substandard for um, professional growth. I know that I can direct teachers to here and they can find more information based on some of the things that I pinned. Lastly, um, one that does not receive a lot of attention is edweb.net. A lot of times districts can't necessarily afford to send teachers or administrators away to different conferences. This is a place where I have found um, tons of free webinars that I'm able to attend. So I'm just going to click over here to this webinar calendar and you can kind of see what's coming up and up on the horizon. Um, this is actually one that I'm attending tomorrow. It's called Ready, Set, Go, Launching Your One-to-One -one Program. Again, we are kind of invested in getting that in our district right now and hoping to um, go that route in the upcoming future. So this is just a quick webinar that I can attend. They usually have a question and answer session at the end. You just stream it through your computer. Um, just some other ones that may be coming up. I haven't looked really at what's down the pike. Um, this one I'm assuming is hot higher order thinking skills web tools to ignite your classroom that would be a great one for um, one of you guys to attend you're learning from somebody outside your regular um, professional development people in your district again this is great stuff that you can advertise to other people in your district just some other events I'm just scrolling through these they're looking great there's game-based learning um, formative assessment, classroom discipline, great events for an up and coming new teacher. So how do you how do you attend these? Um, there is a free membership. So you would just click on join EdWeb. I'm just going to log in real quickly. Um, I have joined specific communities. And within those communities, I get those um, notifications through my email of some of the webinars that are coming up and I just found another good one they have this tweet roll down here on their side I would love to see what some of the top five digital tools of 2014 are so this is maybe something I want to register but over here on the left if you just click on find communities you can either search for a specific community or I just clicked on find and some of the top ones came up so this is one that I am a member of. These little people just kind of tell you which ones I'm a member of, and it tells you how many people are in that community. There is a place for you to engage with people throughout that community. Um, so there's a forum for you to participate in. Again, if somebody has a cool tool, they might share it through there. Um, the different webinars will come through through that group. And you can see that there are just pages and pages and pages of these different places for you to join. 
So those are just some of the, the virtual um, places that you can use or take advantage of for your personal learning network. Another one that I just kind of wanted to give a shameless plug to um, is METC. You guys, you guys may have heard of this. Um, it stands for the Midwest Educational Technology Conference. It is an annual conference. It's huge. It's one of the biggest in the Midwest. Um, and we draw people from um, all across the globe. It is definitely an international conference. And I say we. Um, I'm on, on the planning committee and I do quite a bit of presenting for them. Um, this year, amazingly, I've scaled back. When I say I've scaled back, I'm only presenting three times um, because I will be very pregnant <laughs> by February. Um, but this is something that I feel pretty passionate about. We draw in big, big speakers. Um, so I'm just kind of scrolling down. An opportunity that I want you guys to watch your email for um, is the ability to attend a day for free. Um, you, If you are interested in that, please let me know. You will have some responsibilities that you will have to do throughout the day. We need people to volunteer to help pass out papers, facilitate sessions, um, kind of just being a runner for presenters, making sure their sound equipment is good, if they need technical assistance, finding the appropriate people, that kind of thing. If that's something you're interested in, I'm hoping to be able to um, talk to some of the other program organizers and find out if you guys can attend for free in exchange for fulfilling some of those responsibilities. Maybe working the registration table and helping pass out um, bags and booklets, things like that. So keep an eye out for that. You can see that um, it does happen right here in St. Charles. Again, one of the biggest conferences that you can go to. If you're not going to be there in person, something that I would recommend you do, um, again, here's their little tag roll over here on the side, is follow the tweets from that day. Um, you will see that there is a Twitter account at METC Ed Plus. You can also follow the hashtag. The one that we primarily use is just going to be METC15. You can see it right here. Um, follow the tweets from that day and try to attend virtually if you are unable to kind of help out. But if that's something you're interested in, throw me an email and I will talk to Megan um, from Ed Plus and see if we can work something out. So hopefully you can see that you do have a lot of avenues. Um, to participate in your professional growth and leadership, even if they're not face-to-face -face opportunities. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions about your assignments for this week. I am going to go ahead and conclude um, our lecture for this week. Pay attention to the announcements. I'm going to keep updating you on grading. Um, like I posted on Friday, please be aware of your email. If something's missing or I have a question on an assignment, I'm going to be emailing you about it. Hopefully I'll be updating your grades quite quickly throughout the week so you are aware of where you stand um, with points and those kind of things. So I bid you adieu. Have a great week and I will touch base again with you soon.